Bibles to 2 Kings chapter 4. Mm-hmm. When you have it, say it. Please stand and say amen. amen. 2 Kings chapter 4. We start at verse 1. Old Testament. Well, that, that's going to be the main scripture. I'm going to read the rest of it to you. So, yeah. All right. And it reads, Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead. And thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord, and the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be bondmen. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me what hast thou in the house. And she said, Thine handmaid hath not anything in the house. Save a pot of oil. Then he said, Go, borrow thee vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels. Borrow not a few. Say, not a few. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and shalt pour out into all those vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. So she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons who brought the vessels to her and she poured out and it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said unto her son bring me yet a vessel and he said unto her there is not a vessel more and the oil stayed then she came and told the man of God and he said go sell the oil and pay thy debt and live thou and thy children of the rest. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his word. Father God, we just thank you for your word today. We thank you for this opportunity, Father God. We pray that you will fall fresh upon us, Lord God. Use us today to speak to your people, Lord. Let them receive in Jesus, the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. I want to talk from the topic of it's already done. Say that with me. It's already done. Amen. So a lot of times we find ourselves in crisis situations trying to figure our way out and seeming like we don't know what to do. Forgetting who we are in Christ that we are the children of God. In Matthew 6, in that, sec, that B clause, he says, your father knoweth what things you have need of before you ask him. So whenever you find yourself in a situation, it's not a surprise to God. He already knew before it happened. And he's already made a way because it's already done. Amen. Here we find a widow woman, and she is in a bad situation. Her husband has died. Her provider is gone. And they were in debt. And back then, whether you dead or alive, you're going to pay that debt. So the creditor has come to take her two sons who would have stepped up and took care of her take them to be slaves until they pay their father's debt. She is in a bad situation. And she's crying to the prophet, which is significant that she could find him because uh, the chapter before that he was in uh, Moab. So God had already made a way for her to even be able to cry to the prophet. For him to even be present because he didn't just sit still, he traveled. It reminded him of the good works of her husband and that 
she is in trouble. Well, he's like, in verse 2, what shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in the house? And when I say it's already done, a lot of times we ask God for more. We ask God for something else. And we ask him for the wrong thing. The scripture tells us we don't know what to pray for, and the Spirit has to, has to do it for us. Grown is on the inside that we don't know, but instead of asking God for more, we should ask God for wisdom, for that he can show us the way. He says, if we trust in him with all our heart, lean out to our own understanding, he'll, and he'll direct our path. So if we trust in him to show us, give us the wisdom, Lord, help me to understand. Don't change the situation, because a lot of times the situation it's not about the situation. It's about you. Right. It needs to be a change in you. Your perspective on the situation could lead you to the answer. So he told her, and so God has already made a way. So he asked her, what do you have in your house? Right. I ain't got nothing but a pot of oil. Right. So, uh, so he told her what to do. We read the scripture. Go borrow all the vessels that you can, and you took the oil and poured it out and just kept pouring out and just kept pouring out. See, God will use what you have. Instead of asking him for more, Lord, show me how to be a good steward of what you already blessed me with. How can I use, because you knew I was going to be in this situation before I got here, and he already made a way. So how can I use what I have to make it through? So she sold the oil, paid her debt, saved her sons, and they had some left over. That's the kind of God that we serve. He sees his ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts. And he's already made a way. And see, that's not the first time that we find God using what you have. He used that with the widow. Uh, in Exodus chapter 4, God himself, Moses was complaining about, Lord, they're not going to believe that you that you visited me. And God asked him, he says, what do you have in your hand? What's already in your hand? And then you know the story. God told him to cast it down. It turned into a serpent. He was scared. He picked it back up. He said, this will be a sign that I have visited you. What did you already have in your hand? Right, right, right. Uh, judges, 15 and 15. Samson, you know. We, I love Samson. He's one of my favorite characters in the Bible. Also my father's nickname. But Samson, so I'm a son of Samson. How about that? So Samson, a lot of mischief, a lot of mischief, but the this, this short version, the 15 and 15, um, the Philistines had come to get him for burning their stuff up and whooping them, but they had killed his wife and her father. But anyway, so they came to get him. So his people turned him over to him. And then it says the spirit of the Lord came over him mightily. And it was, they sent a legion, that's a thousand soldiers, with just one man. He broke the little bonds and he says he found a new jawbone of an ass. And he killed a thousand of them, heaps upon heap. So he used what he had right there by him to deliver him. But that's not the only time that we have more witnesses as to God using what we already have. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, round by verse 49, we see a young lad facing a giant. And many of us have faced giants in our lives, and, and we're looking for help from the outside. But this, this young lad, I think the giant was about 9 foot 9, and he was just a teenager, maybe about 15 to 16. And everybody was afraid, and he was angry that he would speak so bad about his people and about his God. He said, you know what? I'm going to take care of this. So David used the slingshot that he already had. He picked up some pebbles. He didn't take but one shot. And he was able to slay Goliath using what God has already given him. And the message is simple. We need to use what God has given us. We steady asking for one thing, and he's already answered. That's why you're not hearing nothing. 
why would I answer something I've already given you the answer to? So a lot of times we need to ask for the wisdom to use what God has already done, what he's already blessed us with, what's already in our hand, what we have in our possession, what's in our house. Because we do find ourselves in situations from time to time. And I I keep saying situations instead of problems because your perspective on a problem helps you because uh, on my nerdy side, when you are under too much stress, your prefrontal cortex will shut you down. Because if you just get to where you can't handle too much, it'll just shut you down. So a lot of times if we just look at something differently, instead of being a problem, it's just a situation. That's a little less stressful than a problem. It's just a situation. I learned that when we was in Jamaica, because they said everything is just a situation. You know, and yeah, they said, no, no worries, no worries. It's just a situation, right? Right, so it's just a situation. When something is going wrong, it's just a situation. Here recently, it seemed like every other day, but literally, I know one day, it was three days out the week, I kept picking up screws in the street, which is very frustrating. Um, I had just got this tire, and the next day, I had to take it back. Man, something wrong with this tire. You got two screws in it, two screws, two different screws side by side in the same tire. So they fix it. The next day, I had to go back. It's a screw in another tire. I'm like, you got to be kidding me, right? Um, skip a day. That was Sunday. Monday, um, another screw in another tire. <laughs> now, but see, God, that's very frustrating, but God had already made a way because after the second time, my son was with me, and we were leaving the barbershop, and it's AutoZone right there. He said, when are you going to go to AutoZone? Because I was going to the tire shop. I was like, well, that would make sense because it seems to keep happening because it already happened two more times earlier in the month. So um, just a real quick story. So I was like, okay, so I bought one of the little kits where you can fix it yourself, which, thank God I did because on that Monday, I was in a parking lot at Chick-fil-A, and I, I heard this screw when I hit it, because it's like, doo, 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 doo. I said, I done picked up another screw. So I'm in Chick-fil-A parking lot. I pull out the little kit. Now, I don't know if y'all have ever tried to plug a tire with air in it. Yeah. So these scars on my hand come from me doing, I did it, you know, pretty strong still. Was able to do it and fix it, but God had already made a way because my son had made that mention and I was able to take care of that and not be stranded and carry on with my work for the day. So God, we just have to stop sometimes and just pay attention and ask for wisdom. That's what we need. And Proverbs 3 and 5 talks, three talks so much about wisdom, how the foundations of the earth are founded upon the wisdom of God. So we need wisdom in our life. Knowledge, see all my life I pursue knowledge. What I want, I want to know. And not realizing that it doesn't matter how much knowledge you have if you don't know how to apply it. So it's the application of knowledge. I grew up with the G.I. Joe, you know, knowing is half the battle. You know, knowledge is power. That's after school, schoolhouse rock. Y'all probably remember some of that. So, but I kind of found out that was wrong. It's not just the knowledge, it's the application of knowledge. The knowledge is not enough. You must do, is what Bruce Lee said. So, so we have to ask for wisdom in these situations. We have to ask for wisdom because God will give it to us. In, in, in James 1 and 5, he says, if any of you lack knowledge, ask of God. He'll give it to you. He'll give it to you. Just ask for it. Lord, I need some wisdom in this situation. And that'll help you out. And also, we find ourselves in situations because a lot of times it's our fault. Like, and we're looking for help, but we got ourselves in the situation. And we have to use what God has given us um, correctly to better us. So a lot of times we're wasteful with it. And God talks about a steward being faithful, and we have to be faithful stewards of what he's already blessed us with. In, in Matthew 25, when he got G Jesus giving the parable of the, the talents, you know, we like that one. You know, he gave one five, one two, and one one. And 
the one who had the five and used it properly and had doubled his money. He says, thy good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. I'll make you ruler over many. And so he'll do the same thing with us. If we faithful over what we have in our house, he'll give us more in the house. Amen? Amen. In, in Daniel chapter 11, I hope I ain't, am I going too fast back there? <laughs> so the B clause, it says the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. The people that do know their God. And the way to know our God is through his son, Jesus. And knowing God, you will be strong when you find yourself in these situations that would breaking most people down. You know, the world, you mentioned it earlier, is in trouble. We need a revival to break out all across this nation. You know, if you happen to be up between 3 and 5 o'clock in the morning, that's what we're praying for. Revival across this nation. Restoration across this nation. We need more people to know God. We need more people to come to Christ. So that's what we're praying for. Because we need to know our God. When we know our God, we'll do exploits. He needs more people who know him to do more. A lot of times, and we get comfortable in our lives, like, well, what's going on in the world? Well, it's not bothering me, you know. And I think this is Black History Month. I think Martin Luther King said that, um, what was the word he used? He basically, uh, I didn't look this up, the quote, it just came to mind while I was talking. But what's the word? Y'all help me out now. If Whatever it is, you're treating somebody wrong somewhere else, it's wrong everywhere else. What, what, what's the word he said? It's a quote from Martin Luther King. Okay, we sorry, y'all. Hopefully y'all don't see this on, t- on the air. <laughs> <laughs> but basically, if, if it's eventually going to get to you. You got to stop it where it is. So it's important what's going on in the world. And we might not be called to go to another country and do this and do that, but in our neighborhoods, on our block, what are we doing? People need to know God. Uh That's the answer to everybody's situation, is knowing God. And you get to know him through Jesus. And that's what we got to do. We got to spread the gospel. It's okay, your family's saved, cool. What about that boy across the street that might be the one to rob you one day? Introduce him to Jesus. Drag him to church sometime. I I like that song he said, my mama drug me. (laughs) Drug him to church. (laughs) By the canon spiritual. But the message is real simple. We got to ask for wisdom to use what we already have because a lot of people are turning from God because they think he's not hearing them. And he never leaves us nor forsakes us. We got to know how to hear his voice. And a lot of times he's not saying what you want to say because he already gave you an answer. He already gave you a solution. I was out of work one time and started a lawn service with no lawnmower and no truck and no weed eater. But I knew I needed to do something. So I borrowed a truck, and I borrowed a lawnmower, and I borrowed a weed eater. So he's giving you resources. You just got to be determined not to quit. That's the kind of people we are. We're celebrating Black History Month and all the things that we've invented that not even got credit for, that we invented out of necessity to make life easy, that everybody's reaping the benefits of, out of necessity. We got to do, we got to be strong and do exploits. Amen? Amen. Yeah, I had 12 yards by the end of the week. So God is good. And if we trust him and believe in him, he will direct our paths. He will show us a way. It might be something totally different than what you think, what you used to doing. Sometimes you got to step out that box. And it's for a reason. It's time to grow and stretch. We don't want to grow and stretch because it's painful. No, we just want to, no, I'm good. No, you want to get on this committee? No, I'm good with where I'm at, you know. But it's it's to your benefit. God has called us for more. We all have purpose. And ask yourself, when you get there and they check what you could have done and should have done to what you did, are they going to line up? Can we all, I'm sure we all could do more for Christ. You know, that person that you could have said something to, but you didn't. 
Amen? Amen. But don't fall away because you don't think God hears your voice. Just ask for wisdom to hear what it is that he's saying. Ask for wisdom because I asked, had to ask for wisdom about why I keep running over stuff. Lord, I know you, you, you got to be trying to tell me something. Am I on the wrong path? Am I going the wrong way? Obviously so, I'm running over all these screws. That's, I mean, if you think about, I didn't look up statistically what the statistic would be to run over that many screws in that short amount of period of time, and it's been years since that happened. But I mean, I'm sure it's, it's interesting to see. It's probably like uh, an astronomical impossibility, but I did it. So I'm like, okay, this has to be a message. And sometimes God's trying to talk to us, and we're not listening. Amen? None of us are, are immune to that. So sometimes when something odd is happening, stop and ask yourself, Lord, what are you trying to tell me? Because we, we're so focused these days. It's, it's churches everywhere. Every time I see a church, I wonder, how did that church start? How did that church start? It's 18 churches on this one street. I'm not exaggerating. So I'm like, how, what's all these churches? Like somebody get mad at somebody and whatnot. And it's not about church. It's not about religion. It's about relationship. You're here to learn. And you got to build that relationship. And I think a lot of times we, we, ne we neglect all kinds of relationships with our spouse, with our children, with our relatives, with our God. So this is just extra. But that relationship is so important. That's how we can hear his voice. How much time do we spend praying? How much time do we spend just sitting still and saying nothing? Let him talk to us. And it's easy to get, you know, we got our everything going on, everybody thinking about probably the Super Bowl today, but we got to stop and give our creator time so we can hear what he is trying to say because he's talking to you. If you ain't heard him in a while, it's because you're not listening because he's saying something. Amen. Amen. Hey, I ain't going to hold you long because I, I can. Somebody said I could be long with it, but <laughs> I know how to cut it off. Amen. But in your situation, God has already made a way. Somebody dealing with something right now just needs to hear that. <coughs> Stop looking for the way and ask that you see the way. Amen. Amen. God bless you.